linear congruence we're trying to solve. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this, something called the totient function. It's Euler's phi function. And I'm going to list all the numbers that are coprime or relatively prime to 30. All right, so 1 uh, and 30 are relatively prime. 7 and 30 have no common factors. Uh, let's see, what's the next one? 11. We can't have any multiples of 2 or multiples of 5, right? Or multiples of 3. So what else? Uh, 13. Again, y'all, I'm trying to list all the numbers that are coprime with 30 less than or equal to 30. 15, can't list that because 5 and 30. Uh, so let's see here, 17. Uh, it looks like it's just going to be prime numbers, which isn't always the case. Um, what do we got here? 17, 19, uh, 23, and 29 it appears. So y'all, every one of those numbers were prime other than one, which is not prime, but uh, that's not always the case. So this is a slightly misleading example, but notice how many numbers are in this list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Am I leaving something out? Let's see, one, seven, uh, let's see here, one, seven, 11. Is this, is this one, two, three, four, five, six? There's eight of them, sorry. So that's what's going on, folks. There's eight in this list. Each of these numbers, 29 has no uh, factor in common with 30. 23, 19, 17, 13, all the way down. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Now, the importance of this, and I won't try to prove this. I don't even know if I can. I saw the proof once, is that 13 raised to this number is always going to be congruent to 1 mod 30. Now, that always happens as long as 30 and 13 are relatively prime, and they are. This would not hold if this base in, the, in this modulus aren't uh, co-prime, okay? So we get that 13 raised to the 8th power is congruent to 1. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens. How, how do we use that? How do we use that as, as a, a congruence reduction tool? Now notice right here, 13 to the eighth is congruent to one by this result that I didn't show you why. But now notice right here, you have 13 to the first. So you see what you have here is 13 to the seventh times 13 to the first. And 13 was in the original congruence. So you get 13 to the eighth right here, 13 to the seventh, 13 to the first is 13 to the eighth. 13 raised to the 8th power is congruent to 1. That's I, I explicitly put the 1 there. Okay. Now, notice I, I went ahead and put 13 to the set. You can treat congruence as just like equality. So I multiplied both sides, both sides by 13 to the 7th. And we get that x is congruent to this large number, 13 to the 7th times 4 still. Okay. Moving right along. And, y'all, we handle it just like an equality, just like an equality, really. Now, you may wonder, why did I split it up like this? Well, notice that 13 squared, and I'll write this down off to the side, 13 squared is also, uh, write this down. Thirteen squared is what, folks? It is equal to uh, 169, right? Now, what is 169 congruent to? Once 13 squared is congruent to, let me write this down, equals 169. Okay, but notice that that's congruent to 15, uh, excuse me, congruent to 19. And y'all, you see why? Uh, 169 minus 19 is divisible by 30. In other words, once uh, 30 divides, 30 divides 169 minus 19. So let me put that in parentheses. Uh, 169 minus 19. That is uh, 169 minus 19 is 150, right? So that's why we could replace 13 squared with 19 right here. That's a big step. Okay, and of course, this is uh, laws of exponents right here. Why did I write it that way? Because I, I just knew that you could uh, 
13 squared is close as, you, as you're going to get to a multiple of 30 is basically the reason. So a little bit of, you know, digging around for that. Now, where in the world did this 22 come from? Okay, well, notice that 4 times 13 And, you know, we've already accounted for the 13 squared cubed term, right? So we, but we still have the 4 times the 13 here, which is equal to 52. Glad I left the space here. And 52 is congruent to 22. Fifty two is congruent to uh, twenty two mod thirty. Fifty two minus twenty two is thirty, right? So that's where this twenty two. And again, y'all, it's understood we're doing mod thirty. That's where the twenty two came from. Okay, now, what's what's happening next? Okay, where in the world do we get this nineteen? Well, uh, nineteen squared. Let me write this out to the side. Again, a lot of this stuff, it's hard to write. It gets so cluttered if you try to write everything down. But 19 squared is congruent to 1. And you know, you see that this is 361. 361 minus 1 is 360, right? And that's divisible by 30 again. This is 361. 361 minus 1 is 360, which is divisible by 30 which is why uh, we can uh, write this down right here. That's, that's where this 19 comes from, okay? Now, uh, so we're in pretty good shape at this point. And, and again, y'all, let me just write it down so it won't be so screwed up here. So this would be equal to 19 squared, which we know is congruent to 1 times 19, right? So the 19 squared is just equal to 1 mod 30, okay? And so that's why this 19 survives, okay? It's this 19 you see right here. And then when you multiply this out and divide by 30, you get a remainder of 28. 22 times 19, I'll let you do the arithmetic on that, but you do get a remainder of 38 when you do this easy multiplication, 22 times 19. Divide by 30, you actually get a remainder of 28. Okay, now let's, let's, let's check the answer. Okay, this is our original equation, uh, 13, times, uh, 13 times 28, I put the 28 right here, is equal to 364, but notice that is congruent to 4. Mod 60, or excuse me, mod 30. So it does check. And y'all, this is the very same thing it is saying is that 30 divides uh, 364 minus 4, which is 360. 30 divides 360. Okay. So that, that's a check. Everything checks out. And that means that 28 is our solution. If you come back up here, 28... Uh, is a member of this set. So X is equal to 28. Yeah, by the way, I'll just say this. I know the video is getting long right now. There's a quick and dirty way to do this that a lot of you guys may know about. I went through it the hard way, just showing you that the Euler fee function works. I'm not claiming this way is anywhere near as efficient. Is some There are a few shortcuts here that a lot of you probably already know right now. And if you happen to know those, let me know. There's a quick and dirty way to do this without going through all of this, okay? But it, it, it involves a little bit of discovery and guessing, okay? Now, uh, let's see what else I want to tell you. But again, we, we took advantage of what is the so-called Euler fee function. This is always true, provided 13 and 30 are relatively prime, and you're just counting the number of co-prime, uh, the, the, you're, you're counting the number of integers less than or equal to 30, that are relatively prime to 30. And all of these integers, 1, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29, are relatively prime. They're not just prime, they're relatively prime. It turned out every number in the list appears to be a prime number. But that's not always the case. This is just kind of a slightly confusing example, but uh, there's plenty of instances where, where this you, you, have non, you have composite numbers in this list. 
But anyway, so you get this truth, you figure out a way to use this nice identity here uh, that 13 to the eighth is congruent to one by multiplying through by 13 to the seventh here, okay? We did that because we get 13 to the eighth and that's why I conspicuously recopied this superfluous one right here, okay? Now the rest of it is just doing congruence reduction however you can. I'm not claiming my way is the best way, but the, uh, I noticed that the best, uh, if we can get 13 squared as a manageable number, we at least we reduce it to um, 19 because uh, you, uh, 30 divides 150, right? So at least we're working with a relatively small number and then we catch an other break right here when we note that 19 squared is congruent to one because again, that's 361 minus one is, is uh, 360 and, and 30 divides 360. And the rest of it is very straightforward arithmetic. I didn't do this multiplication for you, but it, it's very easy to verify that when you multiply 22 by 19, divide by 30, you get 28. So uh, that is uh, the final answer and uh, Hope you got some value out of it.